What's up, everybody? This is the Poker Coaching Study Session. Today, we're going to be looking at Big Blind Defense or Deep Stack. You guys want to raise or call here? Personally, I like raising the offsuit combo would, here. So. Yeah, I raise too. I would call. We're too deep to use this combo. Okay, yep. Check. But two. Hmm. You got a call. Yeah, one over. Time. One over back door. Call. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have to call? Yes. Do it's we? a small bet and you're under rep, like you have a stronger portion of your range. I think it's insane not to call. Yes. Okay. It's a paired board also. Like you're even raising some. Yeah. Like nine, ace nine, ace eight, ace six, calling ace four. Paired boards, I think of as like a scam that you haven't gotten the whole flop yet and you need to get the rest of your flop. So you have to put it yeah. in to get the rest of your flop. What are you investigating here, Louis? Are you trying to find the edges? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just looking at the strategy and try to dodge the high solicitation going on here. A high solicitation. What do you mean? See, now we got the nuts. They're, they're heavily offering stuff here. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> the tortillas? <laughs> no, it's something else right now. You got, yeah, you got this one. Okay, so. Continue defensively. No, uh, do you go for value here? Yeah. The jack I'm sorry, pairs, I missed the turn. We check call the flop, the jack pairs, and now we have some leads there, which is a yeah, you can probably turn. bet here. What are you going? Um, pretty, you think? I don't know. I don't know how to. I, I usually play this defensively. I might go six or something, yeah. five, maybe. I don't know. I would always check to check call. I think we win at showdown with this type of event, but most to bet here. Five or bets two, okay. Maybe we bet for value, expecting to get called like one street by a king eye. Okay. Probably just folding out his equity holdings too. Now it's a chop. Do we try to push the bot off the chop? Not really, right? Yeah. Um, I think you have to bet something here, otherwise you're going to get pushed off yourself a lot. Hmm. You bet Did the you turn, check right? and then call his shenanigans? No? I think I think uh, there's more equity in betting, making him uh, try and – you're going to win more chips by betting and making him fold than trying to bluff catch, yeah? No. I guess not. It does 21 sometimes, but uh, it's not really a thing, right? I guess we're just going to check and fold or check and chop. Yeah, check and chop. I don't think we get much folding here. Probably not. You can raise this some. Um, this is going to be a raise, a minority raise, and a high free, higher frequency call. I think it's a raise at this depth. Okay. Oh, it is. So we check. Uh. What do you do? Is this probably a, a majority call, minority raise? I don't know. What do you think? I'm never raising this in game. I'm just calling. I think this deep, we don't really do much raising with the nine kicker. Yeah, you don't need to, right? You just nope. call. Yeah. Double flush draw. Um, 
I like blocking here, I think. 2.5 maybe. Or are you going for value? You can't go for value. It's got to be blocky, huh? No. Second pair? Yeah, it's small. Don't win check check. We're our second pair. No, it wants to go a little yeah. larger. Okay. Okay. Good second pair. Mm. 10. That's sure. Okay. Called by six. Cool. Um, This is another minority raise, majority flat. I don't really raise this very much, to be honest, and it may not raise it this stacked up. See, that, that's the thing here. Uh, I thought it was never raising this deep. It does raise something this deep for sure versus the button. It does. Let's go. Okay. So I've been looking at exactly this spot the lot recently. And to me on this texture, it's a range bet. For him or for you? Did you three bet? I'm sorry. I yeah, missed we, it. You... We three bet. Oh, yeah. This is definitely a range bet, I would think. Yeah. And if it was ace and three, uh, we would either check a lot or bet polarized. Pick up uh, we pick up showdown, man. We pick up showdown. I kind of like playing check now. Yeah. Call. Got to call once. It raises. Uh, it's wild. 5% of the time. It's like, no. It's pretty wild, huh? 9.2 bet is not good enough. Oh my God, no one's blocking that much. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty. This is why I like this stack deck because it does things like that. Yeah, it does awesome things. This is really good. Thank you. It's also a function of us being the preflop aggressor. I mean, an ace king three three is pretty good as a preflop aggressor. Yeah, but we don't double barrel it. We check raise it. Yeah, it's an. I mean, I guess that's an SPR thing, right? Like, um, check raise is just more efficient way to build pots than um, barrel, barrel, barrel. Only that one. A pretty crazy raise here with the king ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that. And if somebody did that sense. to me in game. It makes sense because you have ace king, aces, kings. I don't think it's bad. But I also don't think uh, people are folding ace 10 or ace 9 or whatever medium aces they show up here with. That's an issue, right? Because when that, that is an issue, we're right? trying to target the, the stuff, right? Do they fold a yeah. king to us? Like a better king than ours? Now, if you can get you could get better kings to fold, I think probably yeah. that seems realistic. Is that what you call value bluffing? Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I struggle, <laughs> I don't know. All right, so now we're gonna check. All right, I won my first step. <laughs> My man. Yeah. You won your first oh. match? Step. Yeah. I was four away yesterday, Galen. I saw. This yeah. is a call. So do we ever find check raises with like a combo like this super low frequency? Yeah. I, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah maybe. Look at this jacked up. I like it. Yeah. Spicy. No, we have the ton of spade. It's like the nuts here. Well, you also get a super honest response. Like, if it's ace ace and they're calling a check race here, it's like, it's pretty easy to play, right? Wow. He clicks it. Yeah, that's that's an ace. So, right. game, it's pretty easy to play at that. Um, this is going to be a combo low frequency raise, I think, or three bet high frequency call. Yeah, 16% raising. Gonna bet small here. Oh, wait, we check, we called. So if we called, we're going to play check. Check raising fairly frequently. You think? I think the nine's almost too weak. I think I do calls here mostly. Yeah, it's always a call, never raising. 
at this stack depth. It does yeah. raise some, but. See here, there's nothing here. Takes like king queen to raise. Yeah, you need the top top of your uh, flatting range, huh? Do you have like a, a backdoor flush with a king, maybe? Yeah, backdoor flushes are pretty attractive combos, it looks like. Mm. Didn't it go um, yeah, turn one, I, check, check. That's a, it's a single that, raise bot. So we have a very strong hand, so it's, I yeah, think, it's six. Bad. So I think we, man, this is a, if it goes check, check on the turn, I, I think we just go pretty big here. Maybe like 13 or even 30. No, don't think you get paid. The one check, check on the turn is marginally made. So we need to be right. kind of big, but keeping in mind that he's weak. So what are your, what are your uh, set of fours do here? What are your set of sixes, set of nines do here? I think they all do the same. Six big line. Maybe. I'm going giant. Yeah, mm -hmm. just because it's a polar node is the only reason I'm going super big. Like, check, check. He's going to have to bluff catch us to defend MDF at some frequency when we go massive. I, yeah, no, I, like, I, I like 30, and then it's easy for us to have bluffs to balance it. 3x spot. That's a bit flashy, is it, Matt? I'll say balance. Uh, I would call it spicy, extra extra sauce. I don't know if I would call it splashy. We have top two on a, like you said, a very unpolarized board. Or a very polarized board. It's like he's either got a super, super strong hand or absolutely nothing. And it's probably absolutely nothing a lot. So you guys want to go bunkers? I was considering playing check raise, to be honest. But um, I think I'm kind of leaning bunkers. So 13? I think 13 is probably going to be the primary response. I would not be I would not be shocked to see minor frequencies of 30. But would, you know, like I'm pretty sure I'm it's gonna go six. Yeah. It's yeah, it does go, go six. six. Hey, I got um, this. now, but if you look, okay, there is some merit here. There is some minor, minor frequencies of bigger sizings here at 13 point or at 2.9, but like I mean I the obvious answer here is six. six. Or check. Check is another reasonable one. And this would be like a check jam note, I think. You fold them? This is just a call, full frequency. Yeah. OK. Um, we have a board where we can definitely have some leads here. And it's going to be a primary check. Wouldn't be surprised to see us play check raise. No, I want to dunk it. That's fine. Yeah. I like yeah. a bet here as well. Yeah. Everyone's right. The ace turn, I would check. Ace yeah. is very bad for us. It's going to be right in the middle of his continues. Mm -hmm. um, we still have equity to some straight, so we're going to continue here. Yeah, feels bad. A five's good, a three's probably good, a four is good. Got a call? Yeah. Yep. It does fold some. Like, okay, now we have a bluff catcher. I wonder if you block here. Do you ever block here? When yeah. check call, check call. Why would we suddenly leave? Because I mean, there's, get value from there's a ton. All right, so like look at our look at our uh, donk range on the flop. The you know three what? actually com this completes the four liner. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, it completes a lot of equity for our donks on the flop. So you might be able to protect our hand here with a. Um, I want to. I want to bet like thirteen here. I would bet like seven. seven. See, I'm kind of with. Uh, I'm kind of in the seven point five camp myself. I think. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, seven. Nice. Well played. Well played. Um, low frequency raise, maybe high frequency call, probably high frequency, frequency high frequency raise, high frequency, high frequency, half half. Yeah, I need to find charts. Check. No, 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 no. Check, check. I don't think so. 
You got second pair condensed board. His flatting range is just going to be all over this. What do you do with pocket nines? If we have pocket nines? Yeah. Uh, in game, I'm going mucho grande. What do you do with pocket seven? Um, probably going small or checking. Pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens. Uh, mucho grande, uh, leaning smaller sizes as you go higher. Think about our three bet range. You know that triangle that goes like to 10 six suited? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about how well it connects here. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm torn between checking and betting small here. All right, we need yeah, to so my idea is our three betting range has some combos that run very close equity wise with a lot of his flatting combos here. So I, I, I'm torn between like, does that push this portion of our range into a bet size or are we playing defense now? This is our flop. I thought we bet our flop. Sorry? This is our, our flop. This is our neighborhood. This is below a nine high. I thought we I mean, if I, this, is, this is not necessarily our neighborhood. We, we three bet. We have the uncapped portion of our range. High oh. cards are our neighborhood. This is uh, this is like gang territory, gang, gang territory line dividing neighborhood where people get like gang violence goes on. I would go six. Checking is See? fine. Betting a little bit is fine. The flush completes. Whenever right. you're in a three bet pot as the aggressor, as the aggressor. And the flush completes. It's a white flag scenario. You need to give up or you need to be extremely cautious because we three bet some suits and stuff, but he calls very heavy with suits and stuff. Right. So the flush is always going to be on the caller side and three bet pots. And it's always going to kill our action. I like a check. I was kind of torn between like a small bet maybe sometimes. That's true. Okay. Right. Kill the action of the whole range when the flush completes in the three bet pot. That's a right. So pretty now solid gonna... heuristic usually. Mm -hmm. You got a call here. Um, yep. He's going to have a lot of like single high spades. Um, we're, we're toast. We're cooked now. Uh, we could jam. That's a fold. Check fold. I... If I, if I was going to do anything, I would do a block bet if you were going to try to pull some shenanigans. But I think jamming is um, kind of suicidal. I kind of like checking here a lot. Okay. Wow, he knits it up on the river. I didn't want to uh, high frequency. This is going to three bet some. Um, it's going to call a lot, though. I would three bet. I think it's in between. Nine. I think it's in between the polarized pieces of our three bit range. I think it's more of a call. Yeah. It's okay. it's gonna be less because the queen, right? Yeah, like it doesn't like doing the queen. And queen I guess nine. the 10 may be a little strong. Queen nine is one. Yeah. We're a pip high, huh? Yeah. You call. Oh. You got to uh, call. Uh, do you? No. I don't know. Do no, you? Fold. Do you? We have, uh, we have spades. We have hearts. We have straights. We have sets. We have two pairs. We have a lot of stuff here. Uh, the problem is we're blocking like the nuts and there's two flush draws that are unblocked. So he's going to have like a, we're going to have, he's got a lot of hands making this bet that we have reasonable equity against. But um, river, the river is going to be so hard to play. Given his sizing, we're gonna fold. I think. Oh, it's I over would call bet against. Too. Yeah, it's... yeah, exactly. I would call against like a two-thirds pot, but I think we just have no equity against the sizing. Oh, he's going for it. Uh, you you raise this a lot. Uh, mucho grande, extra extra large side of French fries. Twelve. Um. Over eighteen. I want, I want to supersize it. Um, 18. 18. 18. You, that oh. was, you just got the standard medium size Happy Meal, Louie. We need the, 
we're hungry. It's uh, lunchtime. I want the oh. extra large. Oh, yeah. Extra large. You can even go pop. I've got no repair. The eight comes. Try and fight with it. You stuff it. So my past iterations of my game would stuff here, which I don't think is a bad response. But, but it's not good, right? We need to go 30. I, there's, yes, yes. I think 30. There's more efficient bet paths, and 30 is better. Yeah. And I... This I is bad. Check all. This Literally is the worst bad. river in the, the deck. Literally the worst river you could find. Yeah, he's going to have a lot of this, right? Like, it's, we it's block? bad, man. We we block? Bad, block? You know, we're not betting 12 here. It's like we have an SPR of 0.3. We're just putting I'm it all in. in. Put it in. We just still beat Ace Eight, okay. and we still beat Ace King. Do you have a nine, sir? <laughs> call if you do. <laughs> oh, oh, he calls. I don't know when I get snapped like this. I'm expecting to see a nine. If he shows seven, well, happy days. Uh, you got to raise. We're too deep to flat. Check, call, check, fold. You, you should be betting off of the time here, but we don't have a spade, it's an A side board. Usually, when we have like these kind of scenarios, the one I want to check the most is the one right under the top card. Mm -hmm. With the so spade, like, would you be more inclined to check here and bet with these offsuit combos that don't block the continues? Uh, it's an A side board and a three bet pot. We should almost always range bet it, but that yeah. the yeah. combo I want to check the most out of the whole thing is kings, and kings yeah, like, played is the the one precisely I want to check even more. There's only like two combos in my entire range that I'm like protecting here. Like I I'll check sometimes with aces. I'll check sometimes with kings and queens, but typically like an ace high board like this, like Louis saying. You just bet it mindlessly. It doesn't matter what you have in your hand at this point. Yeah. And uh, now I would block. But it just seems out. okay. But you can check. Seems good. I don't mind that. Uh, so we defend. It's a suited yeah. combo. We're super deep. Um, Where? low frequency check raise, maybe. I'm not raising without a spade or a heart. Well, you got to continue, you got to call, you got clean outs to the nuts. Yeah, just call. Or and it is can... low frequency, it is low yeah. frequency, but it's the big size. Yeah, I guess you really want to, since you don't have the spade, you really want to leverage some fold equity there. Uh, check fold probably is what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely folding. Yeah, Pretty good turn. Pretty good turn for him. Mm -hmm. um, do we raise this combo low frequency? This no. is kind of a fun one. <laughs> No, I kind of think uh -huh. yes. I think this range has some three bet in it, like low suit. This things. this region of the tree does have some raises. I yeah, know. definitely. I, just I don't go, know exactly think, where it finds it. I've been this raising is not that, King baby. Seven. This is not oh, King sure. Six. Oh well, well, yeah. So the point is that you have to do all of them one hundred percent, but you do you would do some of them some of the time. Wouldn't that give uh, better hands to fold too? Better kings to fold. Dang right. Six. Ah, see, it's not really King, King 7, seven but eight. usually it's like these two. One or two below. Right. So the idea is just recognizing where some of these raises come from regionally. Like, like I agree with what Tim's saying 100%. Like, as long as you're hitting the general area, it's kind of like Ace-5. You say Ace-5 is full frequency. If you don't do full frequency Ace-5 and you did full frequency Ace-3, the EV is going to be pretty similar. King-4 has yeah. a sliver, though, a little tiny sliver. Yeah, yeah, I think sure. yeah, yeah. I the way I look at that um, range, I see it as a boomerang on the on the suited side, the bluffs. So it's like a the two boomerang. connectors. 
Yeah, you can see it as a boomerang. Oh, it is a boomerang. Look at that. That's uh, kind of cool. Yeah. I never thought about it like that before. I like, like that. Some, I like to name the shapes sometimes. There's like triangle, the like high broadways, and the suited jacks, tens, nines, triangles. And then I look at it as a spearhead. The, the boomerang. Yeah. yeah. And two, like I noticed, like you see how like the sevens and the sixes, as they go down, the closer they are, the more you race. I kind of looked at that too. Like, because I was having a hard time picking which ones, you know, a lot of the sevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as it goes down, so basically the way I recognize it, as the closer they are, the better, because obviously you're going to have a straight. It's not as disconnected. Yeah. I like. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, those kind of tricks, those little, like, they're almost like visual anagrams of, of sort. Like, um, those are, those are really cool. I, I like the boomerang analogy. You got to get Tim a proper boomerang. This little paint job is embarrassing. <laughs> you need a touch screen with one of those stylists. You just. This is for the screenshot of the video. No, Thank you. let me get a good boomerang. Don't do that. To I, us. Got, I got on the screenshot, guys. Guys, I'm immortalized. <laughs> Tim, don't you worry, man. Forever. After after we get the thing set up, I'll have I'll have some of this paint stuff fixed for us. <laughs> <laughs> You uh, definitely we can, we can you know definitely a flush draw. We, can, we can definitely raise this combo. This My is only an attractive to raise raise. candidate for a raise. I just think the thing I don't like about raising it is okay, what's well, the raising yeah. a lot, but we don't have any backdoor straight at all. Like if what if we had jack four? This is Tim. The nuts because you get all the better kings to fold. I mean, yeah, sure. and you also uh, you're unblocking a six, which is going to be like a lot of his range and a lot definitely. of his no, auto I mean, c bits. Definitely not having an ace. That's critical. Yeah, I think usually what we see like the deuce is a pair, so it doesn't count. But the low ones, like it, the the it, it's always a thing here. The low ones yeah, are true. always trying to get the better ones to fold. Well, and like, look at the response. So when you raise here, like, look what his aces and better kings do. Like uh, Louis saying, you just get a ton of better hands to fold. We have reasonable equity. Like his aces are, you're just getting folds from a huge sloth of his range. Yeah. We get all the really good kings to fold. This is one Even of the most attractive. Size to fold. Yeah. Yeah. On this board texture, this is honestly probably one of the most attractive raise candidates in the in the flush category yeah i guess the thing that was messing me up um i like i wanted to think about these ones with backdoors like jack five is in there for sure sometimes you know in hands like that but um he doesn't have that many dominating jacks that it gets to fold like you know like the ones with the, he has jack 10 jack nine but those have mm -hmm. too much straight interaction to ever fold so we're never so the most attractive those. quality about this hand is one it can turn top pair two it's unblocking ace x and gets a lot of better king x to fold and three, you just have some good raw equity with your flush draw. Like it and just I think checks the, a lot the of the thing I want to add as an addendum to it gets better kings to fold is and he has lots of better kings. That's I feel like that's the thing that I was missing about. Like I I do want to raise some low flush draws as well, but he just doesn't have that many better, you know, seven X. He doesn't have that much better nine X, but he has gobs of better kings. Yeah. So this is the nuts for me. Yeah, correct. Like you're targeting a huge sloth of his range. What kind of size do we go for when we complete here? I would go small. Locked up equity, um, where the board's still dynamic, you're going to go small very frequently. We're very deep, go, though. So the, the, I'm probably exactly, do half pot. I would do half deep. pot. Yeah, nine, so five, five. Five. And I think it's different with the king high versus the ace high. Yeah, I think I'm going nine. Nine is good. But it really mixes all those sizings. Thirteen yeah. is fine. Five is fine. I guess it that's a function of the board being so dynamic still. Now the board paired with your second nuts. I want to go all in, but I think it's too much. We have to go like seventeen or twenty-four. I think so those sizings board, are about right. The board paired. Um, man, he's gonna have a lot of naked queen X here, though, dude. Yeah, but he could have the nut flush. He could have the full outs. We don't draw to the nuts, so we can't shove. Okay. 
I okay, think so 17 is good. I'm I'm greedier than that one. I'm going primary frequency 24, low frequency 42. Yeah. I think that's too much. I would go be. 17 or 24. Mostly 17. No, it's 40. Ooh, greed. Oh, right greed, on the greed, nail greed, on the head. Greed. And that's the other thing I've noticed too. Like they want to put when you have a good hand, you gotta pile money in there. Huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think we just get called by so many Queen X here, and he's gonna have like Queen X with a single spade, spade that you can't get away, right? Yeah. Sorry, we're repeating the same. Good, good, good. I'll be right back. I would have gem those jacks. Check, check on the flop. We turned second pair. I think we bet it small. I how do we want to play this? We have the weak um, second pair, the flop win check check, the way we structure our ranges. We just bet small. I think our range is I think our range is mainly going 7.6 after his missed flop. See that man, this deep, this deep, he's gonna have so many hands that have reasonable equity and that are still better than us that we can maybe get to fold here and we got good rivers. Do you ever just go 2x here? Nope. I would just go. No, you don't go two X because you're not block. You're unblocking the straights and stuff. Like, ugh. I don't. Let's talk about I, big bets, but I don't understand why. Seven points, not necessarily with his hands, well, but me, I think uh, one of the main keep, things our range uses is overbet in response to a missed flop. Keep, bet keep playing with this solver tool, and you'll get it. You'll figure it out, my man. All right, that's not <laughs> an explanation. <laughs> um, I mean, we want to go big massively. Here. No, 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 no. I, 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 I walked it back. I walked it back. We're not blocking the straights and stuff. I think, honestly, I want to check here. Checking, I think, is going to be fine. Uh -huh. But I think we miss a little bit of value. Like, Maybe. on the flop, he checks his jack X, right? And then he checks, like, bucket seven, right? And then he's going to call all of that to a small bet. Right? I would stop. Let's see. No. Okay. It's never a big bet, though. No, 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 no. You got to look. It's a big bet as much as Pull it is the a range. small bet. <laughs> Pull up the range, though. I think the range can't is a lot say of that. Look, 12.2, that's 2x. Uh, would you like to link. donate a little bit for the hungry children? Can no. you can you pull up the range? Because my thing is about the range. No. Can we say no that's about in the range? The range for what no. A uh, turn versus Miss Flopsy bet. Our, our move. There. All right, there's seven, there's five, and there's a lot of checking. It's super polar, right? Like checking and big betting. Yep. That's kind of what I was expecting. I was expecting you to use more seven than five, but it's not crazy. So you see some big betting from like 10 deuce here, right? You're blocking the straight, you got the back, you got the flush. You need to generate some fold equity so you can go bananas. So the size it uses when you go check, check, it's like seven was, was not bad, but it's more like five. Mm -hmm. Okay, we call this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually raises more than I expected there. Yeah, because it went check, check on the flop. Mm -hmm. So either has a weak case or worst. Three bet. Yeah, three bet some, call some. Oh, uh, call cool. never, actually. Don't <laughs> call never. A night at every stacked up. Oh, you no. gotta um you gotta call this by the way. Oh yeah. Holy that shit, ain't, that's why that you call it. Good. Holy yeah. shit. You play check calls. Players? I don't know why you don't bet that. Who's strong? Oh right? my god. There it goes. Yes. Oh, he likes it. Five into 60. 10%. What a ridiculous hand. We just call and then check the river. We're not yeah. going to fall for this. 
Well, we are going to fall. Raise. Yeah, you've got to click it. It's more than a click. Yeah. All right, now I want to pitch somebody. Anyone? There we go. And Who wants to step up? You're going to click the buttons and you're going to tell us what you think and why, and we're going to try to help you out. So, who is it going to be? If you want to, if you want to be picked, you can just write something in the chat, like type yes. one or me or something like that. I would. Yeah. You want to do it then? Sure. Let's start with you then. All right. So chest hole will be next. Yeah, we'll okay. be next. All right. Do I? Okay. Cool. I think I have it. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but no, you have it's to... drawing. Yeah. What the hell? What is that? What, what is it doing? Why I is it know. doing that? I don't know. What? What are you what? trying? <laughs> okay, so hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You broke it. You like broke this, it. Yes, like this. Tim has the control. Okay, should be good. Okay, that's yeah, good. I, I think Queen Five suited is a completely Defend. standard call. Uh, we three bet a little bit higher in the boomerang. So something like in the queen eight suited range, we three bet some. Oh, a little bit we of three this. Bet this. We three bet this a bit. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I like you already I, incorporating the boomerang. Yeah, I love this. Right? Man, this is great. Uh, I want to check fold pretty much. Do you get to check fold? The five interacts with the ace and the three. You have the backdoor flush for a small. I think you continue. You can... But it's going to be as a raise. Maybe, maybe, maybe a check raise. I, it might I be don't a want fold, to check. but I, I'm stretching. It might yeah. be a fold here, but you need yeah. to get close it's to the margins, right? Mixing a little bit, but it's mainly just a fold. Right. You, you bamboozled me, man. I wanted to fold, and then you, yeah. and you bamboozled me. It's close to the uh, margins, right? It's It's got to be close. It was, because it's already mixing some small percentages, so that's a sign that it's OK. And I still just want to check fold. Well, we can't check anyway. All right, we do. Ten nine suited is a good three bet against cutoff. Is it like? Did we see this earlier? Was it about sixty percent? No, every time. The button. It was every time. So cutoff. It's still well, it's, every time. Here it is, one hundred percent with equal EVs. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty bad board for our hand. It's super dry. We have no back doors. We do have some straight interaction. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, that's yeah. just a fold. We have better hands. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well played. Nice. That's why we fold. You've got it. Well, the faces. All right. So. What do we think here? I think this might be in the boomerang. I think this, so too. This is always a raise. Never call. Always. always. I didn't realize it's always. Not okay, fifty percent. Yep. Pure. Purely fifty percent of the time. We raise it fifty percent of the time every time. Okay. Against. Ugh. <laughs> the problem is, I know I've seen research on these the gappers. They really do perform worse than the pseudo connectors. Um, you make less straights. You make less open-ended straight draws. I think we fold this. No, we call. Might be, uh, it's going to be a call. call, probably. Too good of a Ugh. price. Ugh. Too good. It's too good. Oh, nope. it's a fold. Don't listen to it, man. Let's Why see. Um, it's got to be close, let's, right? OK, so let's see once you're we... right. You're right, Tim. The two gappers. Or I'm sorry, the gappers. Yep, connectors Just still call. Eight. We only call 10, ten eight, eight, yeah. the only one, so we don't call any two gappers. So suited aces are going to keep be pipping somehow, calling or racing. Suited connectors and pairs pretty much always call or keep be pipping, and this the gap stuff is going to go ahead and take a bow. All the good ring except the bow. Nope, that's not what I want. I want that. Okay. Mm, all right, we're in a four bet pot and we have a weak pair. Cool. That's great. And we're in uh, no man's land. 
All right. Well, we're just go on in. Go on in. I call now. Boom. Yeah, boom. Got him. Oh, we got him. It's a fish. It's a fish. fish. I was going to put it in with Ace Hyatt. All right. We have a junky suited hand. We're going to call 100 Big Blinds Deep. Yep. I like calling. I'm surprised it's worth 0.2 bigs. That's more than I would expect. You can make flushes. Yeah, but I'd expect it to be more like worth like 0.05 to 0.1. My, my perception was off. It's worth a lot. Uh, fold. Easy fold. Now it's worth nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely no interactivity with anything. Ooh, King what do you think of this one? Suited. We just looked at some of these. I'm going to call this one. What do you the range, though? Nine? King nine definitely call. This is getting more towards it being a raise. King nine is way too good to raise the bluff. See, I would raise king nine. I would call this one. I like raising this one some and calling a lot. No, mixes. We saw. I think that's just a little oh, bit weaker in the tree. Look yeah, at the a little bit for the. What a garbage flop for this hand. Okay. Yeah, look at that. When we check here, we're expecting 0.36 big blinds. Okay, cool. Bad hand. All right, so it's a paired ace high board. We have some backdoor interaction. I think there's merit in maybe considering a race here sometime. Yep. Yeah, I think we need to think about V-pipping or continuing to v pip this hand. Um, now, we'll continue. I would ask the question to myself, is this the kind of hand that we want to be doing that with? No, I think I it think... has some attractive qualities to be quite honest. I mean, so it gets him off of like, can we get him to fold pocket sevens? What do you think, Louis? I think I would raise it almost every time. It's a pair of board around the big blind. Uh, we're looking for hands that have interaction with the pair of cards. So the king, uh, we can get better kings to fold, maybe like king nine. Only king I think it's attractive. Nine. I would raise this some. Now the question and is, no pairs. the question is, do we want to raise big or do we want to raise standard like three X? I think it's size. small because it's a pair of boards, so you don't really. I think I agree. I think up. if we are raising, I think the main size is going to be the five size. That okay. and we have backdoor equity. Some okay. Oh, it's just calling. It's calling. It would be interesting to look at what combos it is raising because we know there is some raising. Is it pulling from worse kings? I think it's going to be like king king eight offsuit with the king of spade. No, it's not using It seems that to be pulling from queens for whatever reason. Queens and jacks. So the sizing, we were correct, it is the small sizing. And it's pulling aces for value. Yep. That's a lot of weak, That's queen all eggs. a lot of queen all high flushes. flushes for plus some jack. Yeah, it's all space. It's right? pretty much just flushes all around. There's a little bit of a queen jack off over here with a single spade in it that has a Broadway draw and a spade blocker. Mm. Mm -hmm. Jack nine is kind of a similar story, some like back door draws and a single spade. So when it comes to offsuit ace, we do it uh, when we have the spade or without the spade. Without. We. So if you look at ace jack. Oh, sorry, that's that one's impossible. Yeah. Uh, look at ace jack. More without. A little more without. Okay. What about isolating heart combos? Does it do it with the backdoor flush draw like we have ever? No. It seems like the hearts are used to protect the calling range. Right. So maybe it's just pulling from the ones that are completely unblocking and your flush draws. So you're right. It's just so, a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah. Very, very minor component. Yep. So don't don't raise hearts too much here. Right. Because of their backdoor equity, we're using that to protect our calling range. Makes makes good sense to me. Just click call. We're ahead of he's betting queen high, he's betting jack high. So we're ahead sometimes, and we're just going to roll with it. When we uh, raise. Pretty, pretty good card here on the turn for our range. Right, like our, our value, if we raise the buff with an ace, which we would, that ace wants to get game. value <clears throat> with like a 9 or a 13. So this is attractive because there's two fold reasons. The obvious reason is we have the backdoor flush draw that came in. 
the not so obvious reason is we picked up some bluff card equity on the river. Um, so like sometimes when a nine comes in, we could uh, maybe be doing some bluffing here. When a six comes in, we maybe could be doing some bluffing here. Right. If an eight comes in, we have some showdown versus all of the flush draws available. And ditto, like you were saying, I guess a jack, we uh, we bluff both straights then. Uh, I right. want to go big because our value, I think, wants to go big as well. I think we have a very polar range here of like trips and air. So let's go. Um, our spades didn't hit, so the spades are still air balls. They still want to get folds. So part of me wants to exercise precaution here. Um, hey. You were right some of the time. It goes big. The reason I want to exercise precaution here is because a lot of his continuing range is just ace X here. So um, it's going to make us play a little more defensively some of the time. The other thing, too, we saw on the flop, um, King High still has some showdown value. It just beats all the other stuff that checks. So King also checks here sometimes. All right. Thanks a lot, Tim. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Chesshole. Against, oh, sorry, I will finish his hand. On this river, Ugh. we're going to get that. Was no, no, no. no, we bluffed turn and uh, and he called, and I want to give up this river. I think this is the wrong hand to bluff with. We want him to have hearts. We want a spade blocker. This is the Can only we, thing going for us. Is we have I sent you a message really quick. I'm Just miserable here. So I want to yep, check checking 100% of the time. Bluffing is very bad. All right. Well played, Tim. And he bets 80% pot. Good night. Uh, how do I get this up the screen? Okay. Louis, did you take it back? Yeah. Yeah. Chest hold. New turn. Come on. Is it here? Yeah. That's in our neighborhood. I don't know about that. Nope. Why so small? Why do you want to go so small? It's 10% pot. I like putting 10% pot. It's not enough here. So, like, if you look at our exact hand class here, if you're going to bet this hand, we have good equity, but we also benefit greatly from fold equity. And generating fold equity is not something that bet does. So I think the viable options would be mucho grande, um, extra side of french fries, or we're going check to protect oh. our equity. Also, whenever you have boards like Jack 10 8, Jack 10 7, Queen 10 something, these kind of boards are the boards where you usually size up a little bit. Right. They're they're well represented in a calling range and in a three betting range. So equities run close. So um, our range is going to respond by min maxing essentially. Big Here, bets, before, before you click, uh, Chester, uh, tell me what's your. Why you want to bet here? I want to bet here to protect my bluffs. I guess it's chasm bluff, sort of. Um, to protect your bluffs. No, I guess it's just a bluff, right? Uh, thing is, you never have to protect your bluffs. Like, like the that's not good. Okay, you, yeah. It's just like you never need to protect your bluffs. Heuristically, we have the absolute best unpaired hand, one. Um, so a uh, general heuristic you can kind of go by is you don't need the best. You usually don't need to bluff the best unpaired hand. Two, um, this board has just improved really for a calling his calling range. like. So you went through it kind of quick. Um, what did you do on the flop? You bet small? Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. You three yeah. bet and checks it down. Okay, so, so like really not good. His, his bluffs are protecting their equity here. 
So he's going to show you a pair of tens. He's going to show you trip tens here a lot. He's going to show you a pair of nines here a lot. He's going to show you ace jack sometimes. He's going to show you a weak queen here sometimes. He's going to show you better hands here a lot. Um, so like betting small is never going to be an option here. So like, why do you is your primary response here to bet? Because you had to bet on the flop, but you didn't. Right. It's on the flop where you kind of tackle him a little bit, see if he has equity or not, right? Now it's too late. Now it's yeah, I think betting show. here. Yeah, betting here is compounding mistakes at this point. Um, you definitely want to just get to showdown with a holding like this. Yeah. And I want to say, like, let's look at what value is on this board and let's see if we block any of it. Uh, flushes are value. So we'd love to have a yep. trade in our hand to bluff. Um, yep. The straight is value. So if we had a single jack or a single nine, but not paired in our hand. So if we had something like king nine, decent bluff, because then we can get yep. a size to fold. But yeah, not this. Tim's got Tim's got a pretty clear picture on how he's structuring that range. And um, it I would just bluff really high spades. I may have could be good in here. your hand, maybe. Like yep. king of spades, like we don't have this hand because we three bet free, but like king of spades, nine of clubs, great, great three bet or great bluff here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. But so fairly confident this is going to be a check. Yeah. Yeah. If you get to this no, don't put chips in the box. You have to one of your best showdown hands. And you can bluff catch against a reasonable sizing, I think. And if you also look at like the EVs of all the options there, if you click that again, Louis. The EVs of all the options, the worst options are the small bets, followed by the large bets. Yes. So you need to go big if you do something. Right. It just kind of reiterates that point. All right. And he just has a 10 like we were talking oh, about here. Like. Okay, so. Let's let's slow down and walk through our thought process as we kind of do the hand. So looking at this, first thing you want to identify is how deep are we, okay? And then you want to kind of try to think to your GTO ranges, what portions of the range are three betting, what portions are flatting, et cetera, et cetera. So what do you want to do here? I want to raise to 11.5. Okay. Um, what do you think the range is doing with this hand? Do you think it always raises? Do you think it sometimes raises? It raises 100% of the time. I'm gonna say, I think it's raising 30 to 40% of the time, and it's gonna be flatting 60 to 50% of the time, somewhere in there. But um, I don't think raising's crazy here. I think raising's okay. I think we but you're getting 60, to call 40. Yeah, something like that. So looking at the range, 38, 60, it's kind of like we were saying, um, yeah. just being aware that you shouldn't be raising this all the time, but it definitely is a profitable raise sometimes. Cool. Okay, so what do you hear? All right, we're the three better. We're the aggressor. What do you know about our range on a dry king high flop? It's not. It's pretty good. It's not like the, the, the nuts always, but it's pretty good, right? We have ace king, we have pocket aces, we have pocket kings. Like, it's pretty good. So I would say it's better for a three better than a than a caller. So as a response, what do you think we do here? And we're three better, right? So we're in the back. We're in the C bet. Yeah. Right. So I think C betting's good here. What size do you think and why? I would bet 2.45 because people fold to 2.45. All right. So um, the 2.4 number here. Um, Generally, you could probably remove that sizing from your strategy. That sizing is going to be used with very polar combos. So it's going to be used by like pocket kings here. And it's going to be used by like hands like pocket queens and pocket jacks sometimes to target folds um, to kind of protect your equity. But typically, um, you could probably condense your small bet range to something like a quarter or 30%. And it's going to be a minimal equity loss. I think if you're misapplying the two, 5%, whatever that is, um, you're just losing equity more than you're gaining, if that makes sense. I strongly agree. I strongly agree. Okay. It's so easier to balance would, like just a normal small bet check yep, than it is to I like your check. response of saying small, but I would go 6.1. I would just not bother with the two point, whatever, the 10% sizing. This is more like a range bet. Right. 
and even even further yeah like a range bet like like joe's saying like you can pick that small like 30 quarter sizing but even like this it's even preferring like some slightly larger sizings because it's such a dry board it's hard to defend against so we and just yeah. kind of want to generate some fold equity because it's like what can he continue with versus larger and larger bets it's kind of how i think about that it's hard for him to defend but like uh as you look the ev loss between this size 3.69 and uh, this middling size is very minimal so um to simplify your strategy i think betting 6.1 here is a good strategy okay. All right, so you get a call. You get a card that brings in a backdoor flush draw, first thing of note, and it's low and disconnected, relatively disconnected. What does that card mean to you and our range? Better for them than it is for us. So I, I think it's better for them. Yeah, okay. So I want to check. How is no, no, it no. better how, for them? How, yeah, how is oh, it better, is for, it better them? for them than us? Um, he has more backdoor flush draws that he would continue with. He has more straight draws that he would continue with. So like... What kind of straight draw do you think he has here? Name the combos. All right, I'm sorry. Six, four. You six. think six, four is calling your three bet pre Yeah. Very, very, very low frequency, if never. So we still got it and we should still bet it, you're saying? No, 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 no. no. no, no. We're, no, no. Just we're trying just, to analyze the We're five. just questioning your thought processor. Do you see yeah, this? We're... You think it's better for them? And we're not in the same opinion. I think it's well, a it, break it, here. It, it is a break. It's pretty bricky. It's 100% bricky. Right. So this like, is like, it, it's, does, it's not it doesn't change anything. Like he's right. not going to, he, he's not very heavy on like 6-4 or stuff like that. So straights are not really relevant. Maybe a little bit of backdoor flushes sometimes. Sure, maybe, you know, but that's about it. And then it's not going to be ace five of spades. Not like, and is a six of spade calling? I think a six, a three of spade, or a so six of like spade a, uh, are probably folding because yeah. it's a king eye mm -hmm. board. So in three bet plus and king eye board as the caller, you overfold a little bit. Correct. You continue yep. with all of your backdoor flushes. So the, the straight and the backdoor flush is less of a factor here than you think. So yeah, my thoughts with this is like Louis saying, the backdoor flush is a consideration, but we are gonna have nearly equal combos of flushes here. It's not like he has a huge advantage. He is gonna have some more flushes, it's true. But I, I think it's insignificant when you're looking at the entire range. Two, like he said, the five's a brick. It doesn't really connect with his continuing range from a three bet. Um, post flop that calls the flop bet. And lastly, um, I would say about this card, the one consideration that may make us a little more uh, risk averse is the fact that it's going to make some of his middle pairs a little more resilient. So if he's got pocket queens, pocket jacks, and like uh, to pocket eights, they may be a little more sticky here, especially if they have a spade. But um, yeah, I uh, I don't think it really benefits him too much. I do think we are going to be checking here quite a bit still with this combo. Um, I agree. But, and I, I wanted to say a thing that we just hadn't said. It's like, you know, starting from where our value is, you know, who has value here? Who has pocket kings? Who has pocket aces? Who has ace king? And that drives so much of the range here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the framework you're thinking is very good. Like, um, trying to uh break down who has the equity advantages essentially um is going to be a big motivator or a big driver behind our betting strategy but um a little closer at the range to range interaction would help with this like he's just not going to have stuff that really interacts with this five maybe some like wheel aces which are relevant like ace four ace three sometimes but um, I like checking. If we had a spade, I would like barreling. Would be my response. So if you wanted to like look at the range and see if it splits, like just to kind of test the hypothesis, like what is your ace jack uh, with ace of spades doing on that turn? I bet it's barreling at some frequency. 
Um, versus this bet, we're obviously folding. It's So versus cut off, yeah, it's just going to be like a pure raise. This is too strong of a hand. All right, so now what do you think about this flop? Interesting one. It is an interesting one. So you're hovering over a, a large bet, which wow. I think is good. Why do you want to make that size, though? Because I have an overpair, and I want to get all my money in by the turn because I only have a one pair of hands, and I want to get well, all Well, uh, it's fair, but a layer deeper to that is a lot of his calling range is going to be condensed around this. So the probability of him having a hand to continue with is higher. That it, coupled with the fact that you have the effective nuts by having an overpair, like he doesn't have kings here really at a hundred bigs, lesser degree of aces. It's going to be very rare. It's going to be on the rarer side. I think that you run into those hands. I mean, they're going to show up some, but you have the effective nuts. So I would size up even with, more. Yeah, I would go big. I would go pot here a lot. Yeah. But go three called her. No, nope. your, your size was good. It it actually, size, yeah. was good. size was good. Yeah, this is fine. He's going to show you ace jack or a flush draw here a lot. So let's let's put all your chips in. Oh, yeah. oh Jesus. Oh. Yeah, it's just a spot. Yeah, it's a cooler. I mean, we we lose revert that a queen, of and that's easy. Oh, did we revert queen? <laughs> easy game. Easy we revert game. queen every time. I'm gonna call here because it's suited. Yeah. Yeah. Suited two gapper is a pretty quality hand to continue with here on the flop. Um. So before I make a decision, yeah, I'm checking. I'm gonna range check here, but before I make a decision, I like to ask myself um, if this has con attractive continuing properties and if so is it a check raise or a check call and I think yeah, the answer is it does, doesn't have any of that sometimes you just like with this size there's no questions to ask right and yeah well the size honestly blows you out the water right you just kind of <laughs> versus that size yeah you uh, just you just let it go yeah Yeah, then good hand I've that, already supposed to do that. Yeah, he had a good hand to do it with, too. Um, suited two gapper low, connected. Um, it's pretty good call. And what do you do with 8-6 here? 8-6, you could probably do a little more of what it's doing there already. Raising a little bit, yeah. 8-6? Yes. All right, so oh. go through the questions. Do you want to continue with this hand? No. I don't think it's got any attractive qualities to continue with. It's too thin to get out of line, so nice hand. Give it to him. Call yep, pretty good hand. Uh, this... This is like a uh, a pretty solverish special kind of continue hand. Sometimes you're gonna see like it get pretty spicy here. Sometimes, not on this board texture though. I, I don't think we're gonna. Oh, I don't know. This. So go over our general heuristics before you click any buttons. All right. So what do we know about ace high boards? Here, what do we do usually? If you're gonna draw some general generalities about it, we overfold to protect our range on ace high boards a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but then you have to and ask this, you have to ask yourself the question though. It's like the, up the opposite range. is also true. What is he supposed to do on ace high boards? Yep, it is true. To, uh, He's supposed what, to range is, that. Just on this, would we rate? Would we raise this, being that it's the third, just to test it out? On don't we do the the worst pair? Don't we raise on the worst player? No. Just to, no? I thought no. we did. Okay. Sometimes, one like you're touching on a heuristic, but it's a little more contextual than that. Like you can't draw, um, it's not that black and white, I guess is the easiest way to say it. So I think if I had a 10, I'm calling, but a three, I'm just overfolding because an ace is on the board. Well, you need to call, you can't really fold 
a pair better. against late position to a single bet because what I'm trying to go here is I cut off his range betting any two cards on this board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an A side board. So he's just leaning, he's just betting almost everything. So if we overhold to him in this scenario, it's not going to be good. But aren't we just like, unless we hit a six or a three, we're pretty yeah. much just folding on the turn anyway, right? Just, yeah. just to, we're hoping yeah. maybe he checks back. Yeah, again. exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That's what we're looking for a six, a three, or a check back. Okay. Makes sense. I would agree with Louis on this. Standard check because I'm looking for that check back. Yeah, I think standard. I got it. Got the check. Now I would bet 2.5 here. Why? I have a pair. I beat some hands. And I don't know. If you bet 2.5 and you get called, are you going to win? No, I'm just checking. <laughs> What could you possibly beat here with a 2.5 bet? Is Are you value betting or are you bluffing? Because you seem to want to turn your showdown hands a lot into bluffs, and that's not good. You don't do it with that part of the range. I make so much of my money like this guy does. Yeah. See, that's your perception about that. That's a challenge because that's a that's your perception of things. Like you've had positive interactions yeah. by doing those kind of actions. Oh, it definitely doesn't mean that's where you make most of your money. Like to really answer that question, you got to look at your database. Otherwise, you don't know. So there's things I bet, right? Yeah, <laughs> but it's very thin, honestly. I think it's more a check and bluff catching if you want or fold. Yeah. It's not. We just see the numbers right here, didn't we? Look at the numbers. Yeah, but you have a, a like it might be right on this particular instance, but you have a clear tendency that you want to turn showdown hands into a bluff, and that's not good. Like you can't have a profitable strategy and barrel every time you have a marginal showdown hand. It's just not gonna work out. I do know. I, I have a profitable strategy. So I have I don't know. I guess my opponents are um, calling me. So uh, the question I have here is: How do how do you know you have a profitable strategy here? When you when you have that perception of things, how do you know that? Play it. Because you play it. Because I'm my my graph goes up. Like I, I win. So how do you know that's attributed to what you're doing here, though, and not something else? So you think that I'm giving that money away and, and yet still profitable? So I'm saying that you could be doing something else very right and still doing this very wrong and be that much better of a player if you fix this. You okay. have to check that spot exactly, right? In order to see yeah. if it's profitable, right? Well, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, Cause, you you cause, don't know yeah. the answer to that question unless you sit down and look at the data. And the data is the only thing that's going to tell you across a large sample size if you're winning there or not. Usually, here's how I personally handle these kind of things. If I want to go one way and everyone tells me that it should be the other way. You got to think about it, right? And I'm like, still stubborn about it. I mean, where's the problem? The problem is right, right, right. That, that that's an ego thing. Right? That's an ego thing. And that's something that I go through the most every day, right? Sometimes I think I'm right, and everyone says I'm wrong. So you need to be a bit open-minded when, like, good players tell you that this is not how it works. I hear you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up. Does anybody else want to step up and do some? Oh, wait, are you still doing some hands? Yeah, let's let's keep on going. I think Chestol uh, has a couple of leaks that we could probably help with. Yeah, sure. You. Yeah. I'm going to call this hand. Oh, wait, is it the boomerang? No, this isn't the boomerang. This is the yeah. You can put a three little bet this one. A, you can minor frequency three bet, I think. Yeah. Um, mainly a call. But it's, it's mainly a call. You're not making mistakes by calling here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's raising yeah. a lot because it's cut off. It's not the cut bank. off, right? Yep, that and makes I, sense. And I'm raising because it's under his. Uh, he would be opening up nine, so eights and sevens. I want to be, and I use the suited portion of those. Why would that's a good way to structure that mentally, Juan? I think. Yeah. Cut off a little tighter range in the button. That's how it's been a little easier for me to remember instead. Of <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so heuristically, if we three, we just flat, okay. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, it's just, this is gonna be a range te check texture for sure. It's harmful. Yeah, I agree with that. On the raise. I hear yep, you guys. Yep. Yeah, remember this is the one that mixes. So it raises some, it's going to cost some. I was doing some of these studying spots where you know your range is 50 50, and then repeating the hand and doing it the other way so that I get used to both lines. I think that's smart. Two. So I'm just going to call. Yeah. I was doing that earlier smart. today. So it's like, yeah, we've re raised it last time, and also your own muscle memory that you remember that you're like, I raise sometimes, I call sometimes. Well, like, uh, as you kind of see, like, with this hand, like, people have natural tendencies the way they want to play hands. So, you know, it, in effort to be balanced, it's good to try to get comfortable with your non-natural tendencies. Like, there's spots that mix always that I'm very comfortable doing one action with that I have to practice the other one with. How you're talking, Tim. I just called, so I want to check. Yeah. Yep, yep. Backdoors. See, you make this call, but I think it's very thin. It's not wrong, but it's very, very thin. I kind I of agree with Louie. I uh, agree with Louie. Like, you say very thin, but 0.8 bigs. Very thin. Point eight bigs is like not really thin. So something like Louie and I kind of go back and forth on sometimes there is like um, – the EV of these strategies is solely dependent upon what the opponent is doing. So if the opponent's doing something that population doesn't typically do, it just nukes the EV of some of these decision nodes. So it's like, you gotta just kind of keep some of that in your gray matter. It doesn't necessarily make what you're saying right or wrong, but it may make it more marginal or more profitable. I mean, yeah, that's right. true. Air that's to all click on change move, okay. That too, because we have uh, now we're think about the nature of the term. Yeah, that five helps. That's way more than helpful. Uh, like you're in the big blind here, okay? And whenever you're in the big blind and a low card pairs like this, seven or lower, kind of my key card system, right? Seven, mm -hmm. six, five, four. If one of these card pairs, it's always going to be amazing for the big blind. So this is a spot where your range, when there are five pairs like this, your range wants to bluff a lot. Yeah, I can add a, I can add a, a caveat, an, a bit of texture to that as well. Um, when thinking about like what the button strategy does, if they're implementing a mixed strategy and they're starting to use larger bets, think about what portions of their range are doing larger bets and how well represented the card that's pairing is in those ranges. Villain is never taking a large pot size bet here with a five in their hand. They're just not doing it. It's, it's marginal made and it doesn't fit in that range. So if they do that, it makes what Louis is talking about here even more profitable. Whereas like if he bets small here, you may have a, a minor frequency of donking here. If he bets pot here, you're going to have a large frequency of donking here. It's a function of that. And you can look at the ranges and see that represented. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. you so the your fact head. that he bets, yeah, he bets small on the flop. So it's going to be a more minor frequency, but you are going to have donking here. So you want to turn your uh, hand into a bluff? Yeah. No, 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 not necessarily. Um, it's, it's about protecting your equity in some cases. One, two, like if you're thinking about it from a range perspective, you're protecting your equity in some cases and you're generating equity with your fives. Like 
Like his marginal king X when the five pairs, they're just going to check a lot, right? So it's about just leveraging um, leveraging the, the equity shift is how I think about it. And the, I mean, it, it allows you to bluff too. Like you are bluffing here sometimes. Two. So, like we were saying, it's a big bet. It's a it's a big part of the frequency there or the response. What a bizarre river card! Yeah, it is. I think you everything check. points in different ways. Like there's like four things going on, and they're all different. We had some showdown now, though. So. I like checking. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever checking that river. I would be value betting that river. The it's weird thing though is like you have to value bet tiny because you're chopping with all aces. So you need to get called by kings. And I think that's why the solver doesn't like it. But uh, that was a really good hand. That was a really interesting hand. It had some advanced concepts in it and some ideas. Um, a lot of cool stuff going on there. Oh, check, huh? Yeah, fourth pair. I bet you bet out here with like some second pair and uh, maybe a little bit of third pair. I kind of like the deep stack too, because I think that's where I get my biggest problem at is I'm either winning smaller pots or losing huge pots. <laughs> you know? Easy right. to get into deep waters, right? Just yeah, because I'm now, lost. Tell me here, what's the best thing that could happen with your pocket seven? Seven. A seven. And if you get a seven, do you want the guy to pull pre flop? No. So what's the best course of action here? You want to just call him. You just call and you try to make a seven. Louis, this is, how, this is how Where I've been doing it too. I don't know if this is right, but like, let's say, so right now he's opening uh, all nines, right? So what I've been doing is if I have pocket nines or lower, I'm just calling versus if I have some mixing nines, Above, I'm raising sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. I think yeah, that's right? a good. Okay. Uh, that's a that's a good way to mentally structure that. I hadn't thought about it that way before, but I think it makes sense, Juan. Okay. Okay, these are those are key cards for the. So maybe you can dunk that a little bit here. Yeah. See, bingo. Now we just now what do you want to do? Uh, this one or this one? This this one, right? Why do you size up here? Now I cannot be beat, and my opponents like to put their money on the table with worse than me. With what exactly? Aces, kings, queens. Do you think that these don't raise you on the flop? Um, sometimes they don't, no. They uh, all think I have a five. My small bet. So for so me, you basically here, turn you can't the absolute really go nuts. that big because. No, dude, you going big here, you got so much locked up equity here. Like, I think it would be a mistake to go too big here. Yeah. So I would go three point. 3.3. .3. I would not even be surprised to see it checking here, to be quite honest. Yeah. Check or half. I check or half seems like a good response. You want him to try to hit something, whatever he's going for, right? I mean, I like check small or... here because our opponent is drawing too thin and we have it locked up so much. 
Yeah, and they, whenever they, they... You, you start to dunk like on low straight connected boards, seven high or lower, and these kind of low pair boards, it's Smash always going to go awesome. small, small, no matter what you really have. It's like a motion, basically. Is that because that board smashes us and we really want him to try to get out of line with something? If we no, cheat. it's just that we're going to bluff with a bunch of stuff and we want to go for like a cheap bluff kind of. Okay. Now this ace with the flush completing, that's a great spot. It is a good, this a... is a really interesting one. Okay, so what do we do on the turn? Do we go small? Yeah. yeah I'm, almost tempted, I'm almost tempted to check here, man. So you can check raise. I don't know that. I don't know. It's a pair board. The flush completed. I it can't. Would be, I like. I don't think we can assume it's gonna. It's gonna bet here. Yeah, I can't let them bet. They never bet. They Jamming always... is too much, man. You're you're never getting called. I would probably go uh, over bet though. I would go twelve I... or twenty five. See, man, I'm playing check jam here. Like that's what I'll I'm probably... doing here. I'm playing check twenty five. Okay, he's check got jam too many aces. Yeah, he's got too many aces in his range. I'm going to play check jam. The real question is, is he betting the majority of his aces on a pair board where the flush completed? You know, it's a good question, Louis. It's a it's very, very good. Deep. He's it's very, a deep. very good question. And I don't have like the answer for that. And I think like checking might be a mistake here, but my current iteration <laughs> of my game, I'm playing check jam here. I just wonder if we go big here for value, like maybe maybe 12 to 25. Okay. I think personally, right now I'm playing check jam. Okay, now, give it a try. I'm doing twenty five. Yeah, check, check. jam is good. Twenty. Now you're all in. That works. Yeah. Good one, Gail. Thank you. It's just folding. Yeah. What'd you do if you didn't have a spade there? Same. Um, I would be even more likely to check jam. No state is better. Yeah, this is just easy. This has got some attractive properties, maybe for a check raise. Um, I like donking too. Donking is probably pretty good here. Like yeah, you with said. a four in your hand, you have a great donk. You do now. If you had a, if a four was a spade, then it'd be a check, or would it nope. still be the same? No, nope. you could still dock. The it's idea still, is okay. there's straights available, and you're double blocking them, so it's very hard for him to have a straight, and it's very easy for you to have a straight. So you're just leveraging that. Okay. You're basically doubling down on the uh, the fact that you have straights here. It's a dangerous game to play, <laughs> to be quite honest, because some people just don't raise fold ever. See it like the Batman Marshall made hand here on the river, huh? Wonder why it said that. Protect my bluffs. So, all right, one one last hand, and I think we're going to wrap it up. Sounds good. All so right, sure. so before you click that, this could be, yeah. this is probably an attractive raise combo at some frequency. I don't know if you have it in your game right now, but something to think about. 10, 20%, maybe, against aggressive opponents that are very low. I was thinking, oh. I was thinking 30, 70 split. Yeah, 30%. If it's 30%. I think it's more like 20%, 80% call. Roll maybe. the five on a D6. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Zero. No, nope. 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 Too deep. Too deep. He's ten. Just calling. Teaching you my bad habits. You would know. So check. You can definitely open a betting dialogue. I think now. Seven, six. Over. Um. 
what was the coach? I think you go big here. You do. I think you do too. This one big or this one big? I, it's, it's not an over bed, I don't think. It's probably close to pot. Yeah. Well played. Yep, very nice. Thank you for coming up and doing some hands with us, by the way. Yeah. I know it can be, I know it can be kind of uh, intimidating to get up here sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, but, guys. I really appreciate it. Guys. Thanks a lot for coming by, stopping by, everybody. It's always a pleasure to see you guys.